Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Building Repertoires Using Chessable. In this series, I take brand new openings that I've never played before, and I'm learning them for the first time ever using Chessable courses specific to each one. So I'm working through the courses, and after you see me play these openings in my Blitz games during the series, I'll cross-reference them with the Chessable course to make sure I'm playing the right way and making sure I'm learning and, and improving for next time. So I hope you guys really enjoy the series and I hope it gives you an insight into how to study and improve at chess. All right, E4. Well, we know uh, we're ready for E4. We're an E5 player through and through. E4 knights. Okay. D4 is going to be takes. And I think we actually play knight takes E4 here. Unusual. But knight takes E4, followed by queen E7. Knight takes C6, queen E4. Unorthodox. Queen e2, knight takes. So he takes here. Definitely not going to take back just yet. We're going to take this with a check. And I think this should just net me an extra pawn. Question is how we want to take it. To me, it's an interesting choice because taking here makes the most sense. It opens up the bishop. We have open lines here. But it also turns this. It's yes, it's a four on three, but somehow it kind of looks like a like a three on three. I'm gonna trust myself and go for this, but I think there is a case to be made for capturing the other way as well. Let's go ahead and threaten this. And let's not allow this bishop discovery anywhere on the board. Full castle. Well, castle, uh, not defending this pawn. Hey, look, I'm greedy. I'm taking it. Bishop c4 is a great move. I'm going to go back and defend this. Let's go a5 after that. We can bring this bishop out to b4. And the opening was a definite success. This, this uh, knight takes e4 move really threw my opponent off. That's for sure. Okay, I'd like to play rook d4, but for the moment, um, rook e8 check is always uh, available. Although maybe there was king d7 there. But this bishop c5 move developing first made a lot of sense. And remember, rook d8 and maybe a checkmate idea is always in the cards. But that knight takes e4 move, I think it worked like a charm this game. Connecting all our pawns here. Nice, uh, nice pawn structure there. Let's gain a little bit of space over here as well. King b7, king c6. We'll of course play rook d2. So b3, which I can attack from a number of different directions. to trade rooks here. Take this pawn, so if rook h8, we have this, and if f5, we can just take it. Rook takes, there is rook takes e6, so let's be 
maybe slightly, slightly mindful. Going after this pawn. For k8, we can just go here and look to take. g5 seems like the most uh, most concrete move. Let's go f6, so all pawns guard each other. We could have just gone rook d2 and take, but this looks nastier. Because of the bishop here, we can deliver a mate like this. G, G. Let's flip that around. Knight e4, knight e4, queen e7, knight c6. Did not make it in, of course, because we just take and we win. We win a pawn for free there. So yeah. Didn't quite make the course, understandable, understandable. It worked well for us last game. E4, I'm ready. I'm ready. All right, we get the scotch. We're gonna hit him with queen f6. The early queen move. Knight takes, bishop c5, let's make a threat. Oh! How often are you going to beat a 1400 with pretty much scholars, mate? Oh, straight out of the course, straight out of the chessable course. I tell you, I couldn't have done it without it. Okay, d4, knight, f6. And remember, as we've been saying, people are going to be playing the London against us. I'm going to go for the same setup, e6, c5. Now d5, once people play this, and bishop d6. So we'll see how he handles this. Bishop g3 is normal. Haven't seen bishop here too, too often. Doesn't look like it does anything in particular to me. a4, I think that's probably mistimed. Go here, h6. We'll see what the guy's up to, if he wants to take me or not. We have the move e5 that we're ready to do. I think it might be time for e5. e6 as well. At this point, he can't play knight e5, which is really all that I care about. So although I can play e5, um, I'm not sure it's necessary. Yeah, let's play queen here takes we'll just get ready to take back we're thinking of this but probably not right now but after this move we are definitely thinking of this now now it's time for the e5 break and basically i achieved e5 before white could do e4 or get a knight e5 so black will always be better in these positions Let's go bishop there for now. Just kind of bring the rooks to the middle. I feel like <laughs> these can't be terrible decisions. Can't be terrible. Let's go here. Queen here looks quite risky. Let's hit the queen. Queen back to h3 definitely feels wrong, but I have a feeling that's <laughs> where he's headed, because where else is he going to go? 
Knight h4 is an option. So if knight here, maybe knight h4 is tricky. Let's bring this knight into d3, though. I want the light squares. We'll see if we can make the light squares work for us here. Definitely an option to take. I'm probably going to refuse, though, just because I think this queen could be... Maybe it's something we could trap here. Here we have to watch out. Let's go queen here for now. Rook to f6 is a big idea. g5, another idea. Rook here, bishop c2. We can take that pawn and sort of get out like a bandit. Rook, rook there is just waiting for this. Rook f6 is quite, quite a frustrating move, I think. Very annoying that you can't do that. Let's bring the king up. At some point, you might want to take. Very tempting to do that. Let's move the queen for the moment. I think we're threatening some of these moves. Move g4 will be particularly painful, I think. Try to go for this. Take this. F2 is loose. We're not winning it, but position is loose. Knight takes g3, and now absolutely everything is hit. Good game to Bradley Lewis. Position just slowly collapsed there, but it, it really was a uh, another instance of that London system not working out against our direct London system counter. This is something that there's no chessable course on. This is just what I recommend against it. Um, I'm trying to get my opponent to play c3, and c3 is one of the best moves in the London, so it's not hard to do. <laughs> um, and then bishop d6. And here you'll get your opponent to make a tough decision. Either they'll move the bishop back, I've never seen bishop here, but my opponent did it this game. But very unusual to play this and then go bishop g5. Or they'll leave it here and allow you to take. But if they go back, then the way to proceed is queen c7. And the idea is that if white doesn't play knight e5 right now, then he might not ever play at this game. Because your response is knight d7. And now I've got three pieces watching this square. White can never control it again. It's impossible. Bishop here, we can castle. And we're going to be the ones that play e5. And white's going to have to take. And then the London, where you're supposed to have that strong deep on, all of a sudden black is the one that owns the center. That doesn't make sense, right? Normally, this doesn't work because when black plays knight c6 for the same idea, white takes here. And you can't take it back. And then so you take here. And then there's a bunch of theory that involved with this line. White can try to keep the pawn. But I, I don't really like those positions. So instead of developing the knight here, I like this square so that you have other ways to take the pawn on c5 back. Energetic monkey. <laughs> I like the name. All right. Well, I'm going to bring some energy your way with knight c3. Bishop to f5. I believe we go f3. And hey, I'm excited to see this move because I think it makes a lot of sense. It's a really energetic counterattack. And I'm actually not sure it's in the course. So first of all, I think we should take because that's what the move is designed for. Um, let's do it. 
Yep, and there's the follow-up. Now here, I definitely feel like e4 makes sense. Uh, because if you move back, that feels like we're just going in the wrong direction. So I'll go e4. I actually have no idea if that's the right move. Takes, and we'll take the, of course, we have to win our piece back. Otherwise, what are we doing? Takes, so I've got castles, which I believe I should do right away. I have f4, knight f3, bishop to c4. Ooh, and now I have e6. My opponent is losing a piece and perhaps more. Take that check. Um, hmm. I think I'll just try to bring my other rook into the game. Once the other rook enters, not really sure if he'll be able to survive. 93, okay. Definitely don't care about that pawn, that's for sure. We may be able to get a, another piece for our troubles. Also, bishop g6 is made, so pay attention. Pay attention, that was a necessary move by him. I'm not sure he realized that he was stopping a mate there, but still, found, uh, found the move all right. Okay, start with a check. Check, where is our Keo here? Where is our Kyo? There's no knight f4. I mean, of course we can play it, but we we aren't getting it by force. I think I'm going to attack the knight. I'm trying to encourage this move. And wow, he just doesn't is no interest. Maybe he thought he had this, which fails to two different moves. Okay, well, that move hangs the bishop, although I'm not sure I would even take it. <laughs> Maybe I could just move my king. Um, GG to Energetic Monkey. A fun one. Um, I, I'm actually not sure if this move is included in the course. It, it probably isn't. Of course I'm going to verify, but otherwise I might just... Um, Here, f3, and yeah, e5 is not included. It's definitely not like the top move, as you can see, on takes, but it's just important to understand why, because I don't think my opponent is crazy to play e5 here. It makes a lot of sense if I'm playing f3 to immediately challenge the center and make it just completely a mess. So d4, and I think I have it right with e4. Yeah, e4 only move though. Very important to know that. If you don't play that, you could just be behind. So e4, and now if you move the bishop, it's a much different story. At this point, the knight can go here. I'll probably just keep my extra pawn. It won't be, uh, won't be as fun as black wanted. So takes, yeah, we know how to handle this, but what about knight c6, right? This is a way to keep that. Like, am I playing on f4? Hell no, hell no. So I want to make sure I understand the position here. Although e4 can be played, something doesn't feel right about these double pawns. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I can do it, but I'm not interested in that at all, to be honest with you. So what about this pawn? Knight takes d5. It's being suggested as one of the only tries. Makes sense because of e4. Okay, e4, it's time for e5. Knight c6, what line are we going to get hit with now? Bishop c4, so we go knight f6 and allow this. d4, I believe we take it. 
e5, we must go d5. This much I can remember. Here and knight e4. And here, if I'm not mistaken, we go bishop c5. Do we go like this? I don't think so. I'm pretty sure we go like this, even though it looks strange. Because if takes, then there's bishop d7. So he goes bishop b3, which I think is the right one. So we castle now, if I have this right. Takes our queen's attack, so we got to take that back. Okay, I think we got to take this back, and it's good that we're going to get to see this line. Because this is a uh, an important one to remember. So we'll take this. Bishop c6. Now I really got to remember, are we playing bishop a6 and just losing a rook? There's no way. There's no way. So it, it has to be rook b8. Queen takes d5. Okay. Got me thinking here. Remembering the right way to play here is the whole battle. Like, if we play queen e7 and leave the queens on, he castles, and I'm starting to, like, I'm like, uh, where's my edge? So I'm feeling like we need to go queen takes queen and rook takes b2. I don't know if that makes sense, but um, that's what I'm going to go for for now. And I'll be quite interested to know how we did here. Because to me, like I have a weak structure. I feel like I could be doing better. Queen g5 was tempting me with queen c1 ideas. Queen g5 castles, though, and I was like, again, what am I doing here? <laughs> what are my big ideas? Knight a3, all right. If rook e8, I'm not even threatening to take the pawn because of knight c4, so. Here, my opponent can castle this way. Also, bishop b3 now does trap my rook. So, I feel like I gotta move my rook all of a sudden. Which can't be good, you know? Like, so I guess I'll move the rook, but I don't get a good feeling about this. Rook here, like, he could castle in either direction. So, I wonder if I'm supposed to sack the exchange with bishop a6. Something doesn't feel right about that. Here, there's no question. I mean, we're just worse. Let's maybe just get rid of this bishop and try to play with compensation. Rook a4. Yeah, rook a4. So rook b1, rook a4, and rook a5. We might be able to pick up a pawn back. Definitely be able to pick it back now. Just lucky there with a, with a blunder. Knight b5 will retreat our knight. Not interested in having this guy out there uh, defend for himself. Oh, this is a tricky move. Let's go back. We have this pawn we can take. I think this is the uh, this is the way to go. We'll be one pawn ahead. <laughs> that will play a good move. All right. One pawn ahead. Not really winning either, just one pawn ahead. Ah, bless e4, e5. We can pre-move this because we know that you can't really... Um... You can't trade rooks, so... This is always a fair pre-move.
All right, we're going to have to, with three seconds, I think we have to um, start giving the pawn up. Mm hmm. GG to DK Anthony. Well played, buddy. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. I mean, just ruthlessly outplayed by 1400 in E45 because I sat there for about a minute, maybe a little more than a minute, and I was like, after Queen D5, I do not know what to do. <laughs> I have no idea. I was thinking, like, how do we get some advantage here? We're going to study. So, Queen E7. With Rook D8 coming next, White has no time to protect the B2 pawn and has to concede it. Okay, understandable. Rook takes B2. The C2 pawn is hanging. Yes. And this is, uh, this is true that the bishop not being on d5 means there's no bishop b3. Well, we're going to start with d4. So after f5, uh, knight c3 and bishop f4 will stick within the scope of the repertoire. Uh, d5, though, I think I'm truly going to stick to the repertoire and play this. You know, force a knight a6 move. I'm not sure that we've seen exactly this. Oh, wow. Okay, he's panicking. He didn't notice that. Let's just take with a bishop and, okay, you got the same threat to deal with. Okay, he's in total panic mode. He did not see the right way to play. I'm just going to take, and although keeping the bishop is fine, we're going to keep our life super, super easy and just, yeah, trade everywhere. Uh, C3, really good pawn structure against this knight. Um, F4 for him is the next move, so we just want to make sure we're handling that. Queen F3 looks like a fantastic resource. Uh, hampers the F4 move and also makes a threat of our own. Yeah, let's go knight here. So if G5, we can play H4. That, that should be good enough. Do we need h4 right now? I'm not sure that we do. Start with this. Bishop can move. He doesn't move it though. d5 is hanging. Okay, we'll take this. Should be a free pawn. We're also maybe jumping to c7 next. That knight is loose as well, and oh, he's just gonna take. He's just having a bad game. Okay, f4, of course. You know, you you have to uh, you have to go for broke here with the move f4. Understandable. Um, I think what we're gonna do is just go back to f3. If he trades queens, you can count the game as over. <laughs> so that's not an option. And my next move is probably just e4. And and then we just need to castle. Yep, so e4 here. And d5, yeah, we can take and play bishop here, but I don't like that prospect. I'm just going to play e5 and say, okay, <laughs> you can't open things up. b4, I'm developing my bishop. You can take, but I'm castling right after. Yeah, this is not a uh, concern, so go ahead. Go ahead, buddy. Rook f6 is a slightly fancy move. I'm definitely going to throw in the move h4 so that the rook can't jump behind the queen if the queen goes here. I'm a big fan of this move for a few reasons. Yes, there's a hanging pawn here, but this move looks like a winner because the rook can't go here, here, and queen g5 trades the queens by force. 
The best possible thing for me. Let me have it. I can't say no to it. I can't say no to it. I'm a dirty queen trader. Takes? Believe me, I'm not taking back. And now I'm attacking your rook twice. Be careful. Rook takes h7, king over, king up. Stops this pawn from promoting. It's probably, uh, probably good enough. You have to be a little careful, you know. Little uh, scaredy cat to play these moves. Probably even easier is maybe to take take like this, right? This kind of gets things done. Like king e two is fine, but this gets things done in a guaranteed way. And then bring the rook over. And that's all she wrote, bud. He still has pawns, so there's no stalemate. We're going to get a nice bishop checkmate instead of a checkmate with a rook. Much nicer. GG. Okay, knight a6, of course. And of course, black's going to go c6. We're happy to bring the knight back. Knight comes to e2. We play c4. We castle. d4, c6. Well, I'll continue with the knight and the bishop. Knight here, I think. I'm trying to remember, but I think we want just this. Okay, that seems like it helps me because I wanted to play this move anyway. So, am I missing something here? This looks super helpful. Oh, he's, I was going to play these moves voluntarily. Now, I'm not going to play h5 and be greedy. Let's remember, the idea is bishop d3, knight e2, but I think I'm going to be a full move ahead right now. I've had this position, and it was black's turn. So, I think I'm just killing it in terms of the speed. Now we castle. Now the rook's defended. G5, G6 is happening, probably before he's ready. Way before he's ready here. Yeah, this should be, this should be dominating. Literally, black should have a full extra move in this position. So I think, as usual, I, I pretty much go for G5, G6. I think that's the idea. Knight comes back, well, here comes this. Um, queen g6 check, king here, queen g7, king there. He's making a run for it. He's making a run for it. I mean, it's hard to say no to that. I might go rook g1, but then after rook g8, I'm wondering if I'm clever or stupid. <laughs> yeah, I think we want to start with this. Here, here, king d6, queen g3 is definitely one of the first moves I think of because it stops him from running. But then I realized he can't even run next move anyway because of knight e6 forking. So he's just in big trouble. And after this, I'm probably just... Okay, well, he's just going to lose the game now. I was going to say after king d6, I'd probably just play e4, threatening e5. And he can't run away because of knight e6. So I think he's just lost there. This is going to walk right into everything. Completely lost. 
Now, the reason that I was able to turn that into a win so easily is because I was keenly aware that after bishop f5, I play f3 and g4. So if that's the plan and they play bishop here, of course, I have just a full move up now. Because he's supposed to play this, and I go f3 and then g4. But now I get f3, g4 for free. So I'm way ahead here. 92 castle, the rook's defended. We get g5. Um, there's nothing that black can do about it. We played knight g8, we play g6, and the position is like plus two already. d4, we're going to play knight f6, and we have a chance to play the Budapest, which is so rare. And man, I feel like, I honestly do feel, because I've seen this almost every game so far, whenever people play this, they pre-move their next move. Knight f3 pre-move, e3 pre-move, knight c3 pre-move. Like, relax, guys. Relax. Like, what's going on here? I don't think we're supposed to play e4. I mean, how could I not take and play knight c6? It would be a crime not to. Bishop to b4. I suppose I'll just castle here. We'll definitely take, and we'll definitely play knight e4. So even though we just gave up the bishop, we'll be able to get it right back with knight takes on c3. And this looks like a gift to me, because we're going to be able to double and isolate our opponent's pawns. If I know one thing from this course so far, it's any chance that we have to do that, do that. <laughs> Plain and simple. Um, I'll develop with a little bit of uh, tempo here. and Okay, that's one way to lose your rook, so don't do that. So we're just ahead upon here. I'm going to go ahead and make it two. Team Rocket, baby. Prepare for trouble and make it double. Let's bring the rook to the open file. <laughs> Queen a6 is a funny move. Like, I want to, uh, I want to keep, I keep pressure on e2, but I also want to hit a3. Maybe this is not completely ridiculous. But yeah, the bishop wants to go there, so. Actually, this is the this is the way. E six and bishop a six. Mm -hmm. I think we want to do this. I'll, I'll I'll just go for it. I'm up like way too many pawns. I think the king is a little slow to get where it wants to be. Now after this, we have uh, <laughs> anything here? He <laughs> takes a four. Taking another pawn. <laughs> no regard for the position. King here, we can definitely start taking things. I think rook takes e2 might be best. We have a little pin here. Bishop takes e2. Queen c1 or queen d2. And it's like good, but what's next? So I think I'll go with this. It doesn't like win the whole house. There are moves, but he's not finding them. He's not finding them. Just bring the queen back and make sure to get an escape square. I'll make the escape square. Yeah, I think I'll do it on the opposite color of the bishop. Just uh, good habits. Yeah, let's just take here. Rook f1 looks like a pretty common blunder here. Really easy to uh, forget that this guy is influencing the position from so far away. Let's go here and rook e2. Yeah, we're handing a knight back, but I don't think it really matters. Queen takes f3 is playable, but also bishop b7 after rook takes. So yeah, I'm trying to decide which one's better. It looks very, very similar. I think this one's probably better. Close call. I think this one. Yeah, because we can just take and remember, we can take back. He's completely paralyzed here. So king g7, again, he can't take. It's not really a not really a pretty way to do that. King here, and this is hanging, but Bishop F3 will be the fastest mate. GG. 
GG to Mr. TNT. Position blew up in his face, unfortunately. Budapest Gambit. I don't know what it is about move three, but everybody pre-moved. Well, what's up with people? Everybody pre-moves on this move. Is this like uh, the safest time to pre-move? I've seen people do E3, uh, Knight F3. Next game. All right, the white pieces. So d4, knight c3, bishop f4, the standard starting moves. Now after this, we'll just go e3. Now f3, g4, h4, bishop d3. So we've seen this line before. If you guys remember last time, I literally had this position and I could make two moves here. How privileged was I, you know? <laughs> like, damn. Okay, b6 is a total waste of time, so he's probably going to get rolled with the move g5. Um, bishop here. a3 looks like... It just looks like this move needs to happen. But I encountered this before. When I do this and he plays knight h5, in my opinion, it's not that easy to break through. So I'm actually going... Am I going to play a3? a3 looks a pretty good move. He'll probably go back, though. The main thing is I don't love knight h5. Then I go g6, f5. I guess I have e4 there, but something seems a bit off about that position. Even g6 can be met with a different move, like queen f6 or something. I feel like I should be getting better than that. But... He's, he's played b6 and bishop b4, two moves that look really wrong. Okay, taking is definitely very wrong. Now I think he's in probably in big trouble um, because now the knight is uh, pinned, which means I can play g6. He can't even take it because of this. Yes, he can go f5, but I'm feeling like knight g3 should be... Oh, it's so close. So knight g3, knight takes f4, rook takes here, King e7. If I go rook takes queen, there's knight takes d3, and I'm not actually ahead anything at the end of that line, which is unbelievable. It's truly crazy. So I think I'm actually going to play one of the strangest slow moves ever. I'm just going to go king b1. I was really uncomfortable playing, uh, playing like that. Okay, knight here. Now we're going to slot this bishop into e5. Now there's no knight takes uh, bishop. I think it's time to open things up. This knight should be pretty uncomfortable here. And go like this. So long castle. I kind of want to do that. I think he's aware of that. Let's go e4. Bishop is super strong here. I don't know what that is. But first of all, it's a free piece. <laughs> um, so the, the best way to do this will actually be to, to go here and, and actually to take here. Because I'm going to have rook here next. Probably pawn takes, although anything is sufficient. Like, I, I just always have this, but I guess I can cash it in now. The queen was trapped, though, so there was nothing really stopping me, which is why I was in no rush. I just could just take it back. Make sure to get the uh, knight off the board, and then the rest of the game should be pretty easy. Well, it's even easier now, that's for sure. Good game to Scherzi. And we continue on with the black pieces. We're going to get d4 and another London. So again, see if this makes sense, but I'm going to try to play against the London the way I have been. So c5, normally uh, you're going to get people going c3 and then bishop d6. 
and they'll go bishop back, right? And that'll happen almost all the time. Queen c7 now. It's like, you wasted a move by going back. I can waste a move going here before taking back. Knight d2, knight d7. So now notice that white has lost complete control over e5. Knight b3 is just not going to be a good move. Number one, we could <laughs> push the pawn. White loses control of e4. But what I'll do is I'll just play b6 and strengthen that. Knight on b3 is not very effective against the pawn on b6. Okay, bishop b5 pinning the knight. So let's castle. Don't need to have our knight pinned. He takes, and to me, I have a very pleasant option. I can take with the knight, or I could take with the bishop. What are we going to do? I think I'll take with the knight and stay true to this plan of not letting him control the e5 square at all. Um, taking with the pawn makes the most sense. We want to play rook b8. Bishop a6 is a please let me play it kind of move. Bishop a6 is so strong. Um, so he's not going to let me play it. It's good by him. Both of these moves are on deck. Yes, bishop a6 is great. I'm wondering, I'd really like to play a5, a4 first, though. But I'm not sure we have time for that. Not sure. Okay, let's bring the knight here. Covering the e4 move, c4 can still be played, but... Not the scariest. Let's finally do this a5 idea. My queen needs to shift over. And she will have time to do so now. Guarding these two pawns. So now rook b8 can happen. And bishop a6 can happen all at once. Hmm. I guess bishop here. I feel like if either of these pawns push, I want to play d4. h6 will be a great small move to include in my position here. Do we do so now? Let's get rid of this knight first. Okay. Yes, this move's annoying, but we have g6. This move also forces us to do something with our rook. Let's go here. F6, we want to put the uh, the pawns on dark squares. So he's got to go here. Okay, well, I, I was going to play this move anyway. You let me do it and win your knight. So obviously I'm pretty happy about that. Bishop here. Hey, he made a big mistake there. He did not make his escape square the opposite color of my bishop. And now you'll see this bishop just dominates the king, truly unpleasant. And there's just no, no hope here. Check, and rook h2 and rook h1 will be force made no matter what. GG. Good game. That was... Uh... Definitely one we had to work a little harder for. It felt like a game we were better the whole time, but never to the point where there was a clear edge to claim, or I didn't do a good job claiming it. So I loved my position, but still, White was always hanging in there. I think he should have played B3. You made it to the end of yet another episode. I hope that this was really informative, letting you guys know how to study chess, how to improve at it, and how to use Chessable as a tool to help do so. At the end of the day, I think it's one of the best ways that you can learn openings. And I think that this series is a pretty good example of that. So if you liked those courses that I was working through, or if you wanted to pick up uh, different ones more specific to your repertoire, make sure to use chessable.com forward slash chessbra if you're going to upgrade to a pro membership. 
That's all for me, and we'll see you in the next episode.